Good morning, true crime friends. How y'all doing? Today is Thursday. Isn't it a Thursday that feels like a Friday? It's Thursday, January. You know, I almost said February again. January the 25th. Look, total silence. These dogs sit here in total silence. And then I start talking and she starts squeaking that dog on toy. Look, we need to talk about the um, treehouse murder case. The treehouse murder case down there in Florida. The state of Florida versus Tyrone Tucker, right? They had closing arguments yesterday. Thanks be to God. I need all these people to go away because this is what I've learned. I hate everybody. I hate the prosecution. I hate the defense. Everybody gets on my nerves. The judge is sick of everybody. Is everybody just sick of everybody in this case? Okay. For the uninformed, as a brief review, also I have an entire playlist that covers the Treehouse murder case in case you're new here. Ty Tucker was living down there in Florida a homeless, semi-homeless. Uh, he was just sort of floating around. He was being a beach bum. Okay, but he had money. Then why was you a beach bum? Okay, whatever, whatever. He got high because it was Fright Fest, Crazy Fest. I don't know. They were having some kind of festival. He was very, very drunk and possibly high. He does not know if he was smoking crack because I guess crack makes you forget. Oh. I don't know if that's one of the side effects of crack, but apparently it was for him. So he got together with some of his crackish drunk friends. Everybody in this story was hot. And so um, he was just hanging out. He said he did not go anywhere near the uh, site of the crime. And then some people went over to this place called the Treehouse. And they um, did a robbery and a murder and then they ran off. And the getaway driver pointed at Ty and was like, he was involved with us. And so please arrest him. Oh, I could go home um, and I don't have to do any more jail time forever, ever, ever. If I just say it was him and give you details about it being him. Well, yeah, then it was him. And so Ty was like, wait a minute. It was not me. And so now he's on the stand defending himself. Now, listen, based on all the information I just told you, you would think this man has not two nickels to rub together. And that is why he's defending himself. But no, no, no. He, after he got arrested and it went to jail, he was in jail for seven or eight days before an old high school friend looked him up. His old high school friend happened to be the co-founder of CrossFit and she has zillions of dollars. And so they looked at the case and they studied the case and they were like, you know what, let's do. Instead of you hiring you a really good lawyer, P.S. His lawyer got him a plea deal that said, if you say you were involved in this crime, then you could just go home. And he was like, no, I would. That is not what I would like to do. I would like to continue to fight this case um, until its conclusion. And the lawyer was like, that's not a good deal. So he was like, OK, well, then I will just do the case myself. Sir, you. OK, um. Do lawyers take a Hippocratic oath? Like first do no harm, like don't represent idiots. I don't, I'm not sure how lawyering works. But anyway, so this dude is out there representing himself, which is fine and is absolutely his right. But he's representing himself and he's actually doing a decent job. He's just super annoying. He does not know any of the rules. He feels like the ones that do exist don't apply to him. He wastes time. He has witnesses that don't show up. It's real annoying, right? And you would think like, ugh, this guy is terrible. The only people worse than him are the prosecution because these are two seasoned lawyers and they getting their behind kicked by a homeless dude who was a crack enthusiast. What is happening in Key West? Do they have laws down there? I just, I am not entirely certain. But here's the thing. Um, this case involved a knife, right? The kind of knife was like a diving knife or a scuba knife or whatever. The dude that they said like, oh, if you tell on Mr. Tucker, you can go home. He was a scuba instructor who was going to open up a scuba school. So to me, that means that guy, Travis Johnson, was probably more involved than Mr. Tucker. But what do I know? Everybody has got on my nerves and I have frankly stopped paying attention. Every day the judge looks like he has an Excedrin headache. He's just like, oh, you know how like that same look I get on my face when I'm trying to make a video and my dog start barking? That's the same look this judge has on his face. But today, at long last, we are going to go, they're going to uh, read the directions to the jury and then they're going to go on verdict watch. Okay, great. Here's the thing about that. 
there's a question as to how long the, uh, they will allow the jury to be out. Because down there in Key West, in that particular courthouse, it's not uncommon for them to let juries go as late as midnight. What? I will vote any way you tell me to vote if I get to go home by 6.30. I don't, 6.30 is late. To me, that's generous. Midnight? I'm going to be out here in these streets in Key West where all these random crackheads are roaming around stabbing people at midnight. No, I'm not. Uh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. I honestly hope that they acquit this dude and just let him go back to his wife. But listen, Mr. Tucker has made this case his entire personality. Everything about him is this case. I get the feeling he's super, super annoying. Whether he gets convicted or whether he gets acquitted, he's never going to stop talking about this case. He's just not. This is, I get it. It's been six years. It's become your whole life. But something tells me no matter what happens, we will have to hear about this for the rest of his life. Don't go to dinner with him. Don't have a conversation with him. Don't say, hey, good morning to him when you see him down at the CBS. Nothing. Because he's never going to shut up about this case. And I'm annoyed in advance. I'm pre-annoyed. I cannot with this man. Good luck, Mr. Tucker prosecution it's a shame before the lord that y'all brought this case y'all know listen but it is what it is in other weird news this lady um they didn't even give her name they just said there was a woman who was accused in some random state not even sure which one i think it was california of uh unaliving her boyfriend by uh, can you say stab i don't uh, by impaling him um over a hundred times uh, with several knives because if I guess one got broken, one got bent, she got tired, she needed to stretch and take a break. And then she, and honestly, my first question was, what he do? what he do? Did she leave the peach tea crystal light out there on the counter and he just refused to make the peach tea under the theory that he could not possibly add water to powder to make the peach tea? That's a little that's ripped from the headlines of my personal life because my husband, bless his heart, cannot figure out how to make peach tea, even though it's just crystal light and water. Apparently, this recipe is a mystery to him. He, and every, every time I leave that little thing of crystal light out on the counter, he just puts it away and says, baby, there's no peach tea. So I can make a case for there being an unfortunate unaliving here at my house, but I'm not going to do that because I love my husband with all my heart. Why do I always use him as an example of unaliving? I love that man. I honestly do. I am very, very unlikely to actually unalive him, but he is a convenient example. Anyway, back to this lady. Um, she stabbed him over a hundred times. And then when the cops showed up, she, it, she, oh, can you say the S word? She impaled herself a bunch of times. And then it went to court and uh, she got probation. Should we have her out in the street? Should she be out here with me and you? I don't, mm -mm. she needs to go over to the nervous hospital. She can't be here in these streets. Mm -mm. I need them to put her face on every lamp post, every everything so I can see her come and be like, oh, that's the unaliver. Now listen. If this lady's name was Shirley Strawberry and her husband, Ernesto Williams, went on the YouTubes and told everybody that he never really loved his wife anyway after putting her through hell, well, she should get probate. She should be walked out with a b bundle of roses like, hey, girl, have a good day. Mm -hmm. You had to get rid of him. I, what was you going to do? You really did not have a choice. That I would support. Should we be supporting the unfortunate unaliving of people? There are some things about this channel that might be misguided. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about that, but another day. Anyway, it turns out the reason that she got such a light sentence was because she was suffering from weed psychosis. I did not know that was a thing. I have heard of psychosis. I have heard of weed. I did not know those two things went together. I thought if you smoked the wrong weed or too much weed that you just took a nap and ate all the snacks. I did not realize that you could, while you was in the kitchen getting snacks, we had a whole host, but look at this lovely array of knives. Let me go on a lobster. Psychosis? That, is there a warning label on weed? They need to put a warning label because that is a terrible situation, especially with all this legal. Oh my God. 
I'm clutching all of my pearls. If I was wearing pearls, I'm clutching my imaginary pearls right now. I'm telling you that. Weed psychosis? That sounds terrible. Um, Speaking of the nervous hospital, Jennifer Crumley. Do y'all know who Jennifer Crumley is? So look, Jennifer Crumley is the mother of Ethan Crumley. Ethan Crumley um, is the student who desperately needed a very, very long visit at the nervous hospital because he was hearing voices and he was drawing terrible pictures about doing very bad things to the kids at his school. And then his parents were like, you know what? It's going to help quiet your voices so we can go over off to the bar and off to party and off to hang out with our friends and not have to raise you. We're just going to give you this nice handy dandy gun and a whole bunch of bullets so that, um, to keep you busy. You know how like when you have kids and they get on your nerves, you're like, why don't you take this iPad and let me just go take a shower or let me go do whatever. Um, it's kind of like that, only with guns. Also, ill-advised. So, the Crumleys had a child who had some mental health distress. These people were not cut out to be parents. And so, because he wanted it, they got him a gun. Okay. Um, and then when he got caught in school making terrible, terrible pictures, they were like, Ethan, don't get caught. Okay. So he took his gun and his bullets to school and he applied them to the other students, unaliving four of them. It's a horrific story. And he's been arrested and he's going off to jail for the rest of his life and whatever. And hopefully in jail, he'll probably have a better life than he had with them no account parents who did not get him the mental health help that he deserved and needed. He was hearing voices, lady. What about hearing voices says, let's buy you a weapon? You know what? You hearing some, something is tickling your brain and it's real bad. The, the nervous hospital is all the way across town and word on the street is that the mama and daddy was off at the bar ignoring that boy and there's all these text messages of him texting I'm hearing the voices again please come home and the mama is like I'm in the middle of a cocktail can I get back to you later or entirely ignoring him it's horrific so the parents for the first time ever are being charged with I don't know what but because their kid went all the way off the rails and they should have seen it or they saw it and they ignored it the mom and the daddy are being brought on trial and I think that's wonderful here's the thing that you did not know about this case do you remember Megan Amirowitz oh I have a whole Mer Megan Amirowitz playlist Megan Amirowitz who is also from Michigan got mad at her daddy he lived in a hoarder house he was a very very bad alcoholic and so she was sick of him and she was like dad it's my birthday you were supposed to take me to get my hair and nails done and he's like i'm so drunk also the house was filthy not like he needed to vacuum like people with hazmat suits needed to come in there the house smelled terrible the sinks were clogged up and the place was filled with fleas and your teenage daughter is living here. She got mad at him laying on the couch and she threw some stuff at him. Unbeknownst to her, one of the things that she threw was drain cleaner. And so lie got all over his legs. But because he laid on this same couch all the time, he could not be bothered to get up to go to the bathroom. And obviously he's too proud to wear Depends, although he's not too proud to live in a house with fleas on the ceiling and every place else. He um, relieved himself there on the couch, causing him to get wet. You know what happens when you mix water and lye uh, burns? Very, very bad burns. You've heard of first degree burns. That's like, oh, it's hot. Second degree burns, like you might get all your curling iron um, turns red. Third degree is a blister. Fourth degree means I never even heard of fourth degree burns. It goes all the way down to the bone. This man had fourth degree burns over all the bottom half of his body because his daughter threw lie on him and he relieved himself and he was so drunk he just rolled around on it in it for hours. Sadly, um, he went to the hospital and he was like, I think Megan might have thrown something at me. I'm not sure what. At least maybe it killed some of the fleas and he died. And so Megan got arrested and went to jail. While she was in jail, she needed a mother figure. Guess who was her mother figure? None other than Jennifer 
crumbly. Oh yes, they were jail BFF because Megan needed to go to uh, the nervous hospital inside the prison and Jennifer thought going to the nervous hospital inside the prison would be a nice escape for her. So the two of them hooked up in prison and when Megan was finally released, she said, you know who was my best friend? Jennifer Crumley. And I was like, the heifer who ain't raised her child is now raising, uh, so she's, Clearly, she's real comfortable and friendly with unalivers, which I don't, I mean, in Megan's case, it was a very sad situation. It was an accidental unaliver. But Jennifer, girl, I suspect Miss Jennifer is going to be over there at the prison for a long, long time. But I was like, dang, that's wild. I wonder if they stay in touch. Are they pen pals? Megan is now a felon, and I don't know if you can hang out. Well, I guess Jennifer is not a felon yet. I don't know. Um... Are they like best friends? Would they skip down the hall together holding hands? She did say this lady would calm her down and braid her hair and hold her and mother her. Oh, okay. And all things considered, the um, bad mother, Jennifer Crumley, was probably a better parent than her pea-soaked daddy. I'm just, all these stories are so sad. Hmm. I'm going to have to go do something to cheer myself up. Possibly have more coffee. Okay, look, you know I have to cook lunch. It's after 5 a.m. I have not even I have not even thought about what I'm going to cook for myself for lunch today. I wonder if there's... Oh, I still have more Cornish game hens. Oh, I'm going to go roast some... Oh, we have kale. I'm going to roast some, maybe some sweet potatoes. It is going to be a delicious day. Okay, listen, I need to go get my delicious day started. I hope you're out there having a delicious way as well day as well. Have yourself a cup of coffee. Yesterday, I made the terrible, terrible error of not having coffee in the morning. Let me tell you, friends, that will never happen again. Because by the time I got to my morning Starbucks, it was a situation. I basically put my entire body in a giant, giant flat white, which is what got me through the day. I hope you find a nice way to get through your day today. Y'all make it a good one. Oh, wait, like and subscribe. This channel would probably be so much better if I remember to say that at the beginning. But I'm just here to gossip. I can't, I can't be remembering all this technical stuff. All right, y'all have a good day. Bye.